The taper should be moved well in advance of the obstructed view. Beginnings of tapers should never be hidden behind a curve. Traffic should be observed to see if the taper is working correctly. Frequent use of brakes and evidence of skid marks are indications that either the taper is too short or the advance warning is inadequate. The activity area includes the traffic space, the buffer space, and the workspace. The traffic space is the portion of the highway in which road users are routed through the activity area. The buffer space is the open or unoccupied space between the transition area and the workspace. The buffer space provides a margin of safety for both traffic and workers by providing some recovery space for an errant vehicle. If a driver doesn't see the advanced warning devices or fails to negotiate the transition, a buffer space provides room to stop a vehicle before it actually enters the workspace. The length of the buffer space is measured from the end of the transition area and is based on the stopping site distance for the speed being considered. The length of the buffer space can be found in the Index 600 series. It is important that the buffer space be free of equipment, workers, materials, and vehicles. When designing work zones, the following should be considered for buffer spaces. Place channelizing devices along the edge of the buffer space. The spacing of channelizing devices is based on the speed limit. For speed limits less than 45 miles per hour, the device spacing should be no greater than 50 feet. For speed limits greater than 50 miles per hour, the device spacing should be no greater than 50 feet for cones or 100 feet for barricades or drums. Situations occur where one lane of traffic uses a lane that normally flows in the opposite direction. In these situations, a buffer space should be used to separate the end of the workspace or downstream taper from the flagger station to help prevent head-on collisions. The workspace is that portion of the roadway which contains the work activity. It is closed to traffic and is set aside exclusively for workers, equipment, and construction materials. The workspace may be stationary or may move as work progresses. The workspace is usually delineated by channelizing devices or shielded by barriers to exclude traffic and pedestrians. Every feasible effort should be made to minimize traffic conflicts with the workspace. These are suggestions. Use traffic control devices to make the travel path clearly visible to drivers. For nighttime operations, the traffic control devices must be retroreflectorized and have a large surface area. Place channelizing devices between the workspace and the traffic space. The spacing of devices can be found in the Index 600 series. Provide safe entrances and exits for work vehicles. Flashing lights should be considered on work vehicles exposed to traffic and a truck mounted attenuator should be provided whenever possible. The termination area provides a short distance for traffic to clear the work space and to return to the normal traffic lane. It extends from the downstream end of the work space to the end road work sign. A downstream taper may be placed at the termination area. A buffer space may also be used between the workspace and the beginning of the downstream taper. For some work operations, such as a single location utility or maintenance repair, it may not be necessary to display an end road work sign because it will be obvious to the drivers that they've passed the work space. Avoid gaps in the traffic control that may falsely indicate to drivers that they've passed the work zone. For example, if the work includes intermittent activity through a one-mile section, drivers should be reminded periodically that they are still in the work zone. The primary purpose of the warning sign, Road Work Next Miles, is to inform the driver of the length of the work zone. It should not be erected until work begins. In moving operations, the advanced warning area may be provided by signs and flashing lights on the work vehicle. Additional advanced warning signs may be warranted depending on the volume and speed of the traffic. A shadow vehicle equipped with an aero panel sign and flashing lights may also be used. 
With moving operations, the transition area actually moves with the workspace, and the buffer space is the area between the shadow vehicle, if one is used, and the work vehicle. The use of a truck-mounted attenuator is required for moving operations. While an advanced warning vehicle with a truck-mounted attenuator is optional on two-lane, two-way roads, it is required on multi-lane roadways. As a review, these are the four parts of a temporary traffic control zone. The advanced warning area is the section of highway where road users are informed about the upcoming work zone. The transition area is that section of the highway where road users are redirected out of their normal path by a taper or lane shift to eliminate interference with work activities. The length of the taper or lane shift can be found in the Index 600 series. The activity area is the section of the highway where the work activity takes place. It is comprised of the workspace, which is for workers, equipment, and their vehicles, and the traffic space, which is the portion of the highway in which road users are routed through the activity area, and the buffer space, which provides the margin of safety for both traffic and workers by providing some recovery space for an errant vehicle. The termination area tells the motorists they're out of the temporary traffic control zone and they may resume normal driving. This concludes the review of the four basic parts of a temporary traffic control zone and their functions. In the next session of the series, we'll review some typical applications that you'll be using in your work.